Hi, I'm Sally Moore. I live in Ickersham. Um, I've been there for about 30 years. It's a nice village, um, quite a big one. Uh, it has a village shop where um, everybody finds out everything about everyone. <laughs> it's, um, I work at the Conquest Hospital and have done for 26 years. Um, I love it. It's very, very busy, but I do enjoy it and do feel that make a bit of a difference there. I'm the cashier, which um, involves um, dishing out all kinds of petty cash for lots of different reasons. For taking care of patients' money when um, they come in to have operations or procedures and they don't, or an accident where they're not really expecting to be in hospital and they happen to have all their credit cards and worldly goods with them, um, so I take care of those. I'm married to David. We've been married for 28 years next week, although we were together um, for five years previous to that. Um, but when I became a Christian, I realised that I needed to be married. I hadn't worked out that actually what I was doing was wrong before it seemed um, natural as lots of other people did it. Um, I have two children. I have Craig who is 37 and he lives in Australia now. He has um, a wife and two, two boys, so I've got two grandchildren in other parts, but luckily I do usually get to see them about every 18 months. Um, and I have a daughter and she's 35 and um, she has three children and they're nearby, they live in Hastings, so luckily I get to see them a lot and um, usually have one of the girls to stay overnight at least once a week. I don't have them together because then um, we've, we have arguments <laughs> and there's a lot more fun um, to have one at a time and be able to spoil them. When I'm not working, um, I love going to the theatre um, in London or locally to the stables, to the White Rock. Um, definitely enjoy musicals and, um, and thrillers. Um, I love to read as well and um, I also enjoy very much going on holiday if I can afford it. <laughs> um, enjoy being in the sun and outdoors. I love swimming. Um, I was not brought up to be a Christian. Uh, my parents didn't go to church. Um, the only thing I really knew about um, God or Jesus was at assembly at school. Um, and RE lessons. Um, I liked history, I liked RE because I love stories and um, there were a lot of stories and just I think took it, I was told there was a God and when you're young you, you believe everything that the teacher tells you and it was just in my background but not really a big event um, and even when I left a school and went to work I still didn't wasn't involved in any kind of Christianity or any church and didn't really know anybody that was worked in London very busy it just didn't come up at all I don't have any brothers or sisters neither did my mother or my father so I have no cousins aunties or uncles or any family but I did have three great aunts who lived down in the New Forest um, so my dad was their nephew and he would take me there usually once a year um, for a week's holiday and they all went to a Baptist church um, in uh, New Milton, um, Ashley Baptist Church it was called and then so once a year I went to Sunday school. We, we um, went to church there, my, um, one of my aunties played the organ, I think for well over 50 years at that church. Yes, um, so I did go to Sunday school once a year <laughs> and I quite liked it um, at the time. Um, but that was the extent really, because I think my, my, my dad didn't go. He had gone as a child, um, but um, his mother died very young and he was only 21 and I think he was enjoying the RAF and the war and everything else and he didn't go after that. But what happened was this, this great aunt died and um, and I desperately wanted to go to the funeral with my parents and I was living um, up in Settlescombe Road North um, in Hastings and I drove to down to the New Forest to go to the funeral. 
while well, I'd left the children at home, they were small, um, uh, with, with David, and I was going to be away just one night. And we had horrendous snow, really, really bad snow after I'd been down um, for the funeral. And um, the journey home was horrific. Um, it took hours and hours and hours. They shut the A21 behind me um, as I was coming. And I found myself alone, frightened, before mobile phones, really, really scared. Wasn't going to make it, didn't know anyone. It was dark, it was cold, it was snowing. And I found myself praying. And I'd really, really praying to God to help me, to get me home. And he did. I managed to get right to the um, past Claremont School, to the top of the hill. I, lorries fallen over by the side of me. It was really, really scary. Got to the top of the hill um, along the road and was just a wreck. I was just completely shaking, and um, but I was there. Parked the car in what I presumed was the side of the road because it really was bad the snow, and walked the last the last bit um, until I got home and. I knew that I'd had help to get home because no, there was no one behind me. Nobody else came. There was no one in front of me apart from lorries that had fallen over on their sides and people that had got stuck. And um, I think that was probably a Friday. And I found myself on the Sunday morning in Wellingtons and jeans and, and you know, clothes fit for the snow outside um, St. Leonard's Baptist Church on the Sunday morning, where I knew some people that went there. Um, as um, one of them had been, uh, was a baby minder and had looked after my children while I'd um, worked for an hour a day when they were small. And I stood outside and, and at the bottom of the steps and then I looked round and it had quite big doors, imposing doors and a sort of steps that walk up to it. And I thought, oh, I can't possibly go in there. Look at me in jeans and, and boots and sort of stood there. And then someone came along and said, hello, you coming in? And I said, well, I'm not sure. Yes, come on, come in. And I found myself taken in um, into to the Baptist church and... It was just wonderful. They, people made me feel so welcome and it was so warm and so cheerful. And even though I had no idea whether to stand up, sit down or what to do or how to behave, um, it, it just all happened. And at that, almost that day, I just said, wanted to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Um, I know you got me home and you know I wanted to come in and thank you. And I thought I could only talk to God if I went to church. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't know any better and um, and it was amazing and that's how I came to, came to know the Lord and they were wonderful and helped me and taught me and I found I got really excited every Sunday when I was going to church and I took the children and they went to Sunday school and um, it it was great and I really you know haven't looked back since and he's been with me ever he was with me before but I just didn't realize it Yes, I have an amazing friend in Jesus, an amazing friend in Jesus, and I am so, so grateful for that. He takes on so many of my problems, and um, and I'm filled with hope um, with him, and over the years he's been with me through some really difficult times, and uh, yeah. There seem to be things every day in which I need to go to the Lord to. I mean, he, yes, he's there with me. I'm, I'm, I live in a comfortable house. I'm very, very blessed. I have a, a job that I love, which is, which could, at times is very difficult. And I do get some difficult people that come to my, to my window who would, would like me to give them money for um, their own, um, some kind of benefit and they're entitled to have um, their fares reimbursed when they come for the hospital appointments. Some of them um, would like a lot more than that and they can be quite aggressive and they can be quite difficult and um, the Lord helps me to not judge these people and to um, feel for them how they're feeling and to advise them and to help them. and. I know that I couldn't have been like that without having Jesus with me. A lot of people don't believe I go to church when I tell them. 
They say, no, you don't. I say, yes, I do. <laughs> because their idea of church is, as I think, probably what I thought it was, you know, 30 years ago, um, that it's, a, you know, a cold place where people judge you. And um, you have to go wearing a funny hat and, um, it, you know, and it's a cold, hard pew that you sit on where, you know, where it's, it's just not like that anymore. You know, most churches have comfortable chairs. They're warm. They invite you. They not judge you. They're just happy to see you and very, very welcoming. Um, yeah, I do get some, you know, you have to be brave to say because some people, you know, uh, um, think you're a bit odd you know, for a while, but then I think people do see in you a difference, a difference. People will say to you, oh, there's no God, you know, you're just um, using it as a crutch, um, which is so not true for me. I know what it's like to not be a Christian. I wasn't a Christian for the first half of my life, um, and I have been for the second half, and um, he has just changed it for me totally um it's oh god i can't think of it. you know it's just um i feel him he's real he guides me i give him my problems he helps me to deal with them you don't have to try and sort everything out for yourself you do still try to um and then it doesn't work terribly well and then you realize i haven't asked god to help me with this to guide me to you know, and he gives you thoughts he leads you um he he is very real very real to me so i know he is there i had a stillbirth i had a baby that was stillborn uh, full term um that was very difficult um they told me the night before that the um, the baby had died, but that I would have to um, have her naturally. So I had no choice, I had to do that. I remember locking myself in the bathroom in St. Helen's Hospital, when it, because it was still there, and lying in the bath and screaming, um, not too loudly, but really screaming from within to say, why me, God, why me? Um, and I just felt this sense of, um, of peace come over me and calmness. And then I thought, and I'm saying, why not me? What's so special about me? Um, this happens to lots of people. What, why shouldn't it happen to me? It's happened to me. Um, got to get on with this. Um, I'm not on my own. There are going to be, there are people with me. And I was really, really angry with God and at, the, at that time, and the only place I could be on my own was in the bathroom, which is why I was there and <clears throat> shouting. I went in a very screwed up and angry person and came out very calm and slightly removed and, um, and had um, this baby girl the next day. Um, who, um, who was perfect and didn't have anything wrong with her, bless her, but um, had suffocated from lack of oxygen but, um, because of high blood pressure. Um, but um, later, and it was um, some time, some years later, um, I had a dream in the night and I saw Jesus walking with my baby, holding her hand and um, she is absolutely fine and she is in heaven and God just wanted her early and that's fine he gave me another baby later and I had Louise so um you know that is that that is a very very strong realization that um that God is there if somebody said to me you know why on earth should I come to church I would say Firstly, um, it's an amazing friendship and, um, from people. They are very, very warm and welcoming. Lots of things go on, um, not just a Sunday service, but there are lots of um, house groups you can go to. There are musical um, events, um, lots to do, but just come along and see how you, you felt about it. Um, it's not as you imagine it, 
and the comfort that you get from the people and I think the well when you come to know Jesus the, the comfort you get from that is un, you know unexplainable really it's just uh, but um, yeah it's fun it's fun too it's got a lot to offer much more than you think <laughs>